Need to update okay. the scoreboard. I, I had like five minute break and I still forgot to update the scoreboard. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. My memory is just so bad. I think I'd, uh, after doing literally hundreds of streams, I'd remember such a, an important thing. But no, let's count down again. In three, two, one, play. And switch the scene now. There we go. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Slam vs. Leary, game number one in the third set today for the All-Star League Week 2. Um, I'm excited for this set of games, and we're going to be here on Serengeti for our first map. Joining me for this one, we're going to have Major Queros, and I believe this is the first time we've actually cast anything together. Yes, I think we did. We did play, of course, in the, the free-for-all, but that's about it. Sure, but I mean, that was playing and not casting, so yes. it's a different yes. different ball game now. This is exciting. Yeah, it is. So uh, down to the south of the map in the blue, we have Slam, and he's got the Teutons. It's going to be Mirror Sivs, so if everything's all right, we should see Liri in the north of the map. He's in the red as the Teutons as well. And uh, maybe you could talk us through the map a little bit here and uh, what we're seeing for both players. Um, yeah, so Serengeti, known for a very... Uh or at least in my opinion, a very awkward map to play because of the wood lines. Um, they don't really close, so it's quite hard to wall as well. And you will have to move your uh, lumber camp quite a lot around. So yeah, that's that's always tough to play, but also fun to watch because uh, open maps also mean a lot of action, hopefully. And uh, with the Teutons, that uh, that should be no problem. Other than that, I, I quite like Slam, Slam's map. He has a pretty nice wood line in the back. And also two gold in the back, so uh, that's already a pretty good start for him. Yeah, the only thing I'd say about this wood line is it's kind of partially blocked by the berries. And, uh, you know, it's going to be awkward to mill that uh, like on the berries there. It's kind of blocked in a little bit, but it's not so bad, I guess. I mean, he, he's got to be a little careful if he sends a villager to the... Oh, no, he can actually walk between the house and the lumber camp. Okay, that's not so bad then. I thought the lumber camp and the house were touching and then villagers would end up walking all the way around and it would get really messy, but it's not so bad at all. But yeah, what you say about the lumber lines is absolutely correct, of course. Uh, there are very, there are very gappy. Uh, it's very hard to close and with... Slam being in a bit of a crater as well, uh, and with both of his stones being at the front, now uh, we might see Slam wanting to be a little more aggressive here so that he doesn't lose access to the stone and isn't fighting uphill. Uh, if we look over to Liri's side, his map's looking a lot flatter, uh, which is something that's certainly going to be good for him, but his stone is also on the front. And the reason I point out the stone is because they are the Teutons, and this is a map where typically we do see a lot of towers. Yeah, it's very nice to get, uh, get some towers here and there and uh, go all around the map. Uh, especially with the wood lines. If you only get one good tower, then, then a wood line might be already uh, denied. So, yeah, that's that's actually a pretty good strategy on this one. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously the Teutons having um, the capacity of 10 in their towers, the fact that they get murder holes for free, uh, makes them a strong tower or sieve as it is. And because this map is so hard to wall, uh, that is the reason why you see players making so many towers, because it's easier to put up towers than it is to try and plug all these holes and actually wall yourself off completely. Uh, the, the resources on this map are also a little bit unusual as well. Uh, we do have one elephant instead of a boar, and the elephant has 400 food instead of 360. And um, also, uh, we have both zebra and ostrich. Uh, so it's like a double deer patch as well, uh, which actually means there is quite a lot of food available on this map. Although at first glance, it, it's, it's kind of like you got to play a little mini game to get it to your uh, to your TC. Yeah. Also, the tricky part about the you know all the food hanging around, at least in the experience that I played this map, was that it might be a little bit hard once you go uh, up to Castle Age to get your food in. So you shouldn't forget that. Uh, yeah, once the food is gone, that your food production is also gone. Uh, and that's at least where uh, where I sometimes mess up. But yeah, starting uh, starting food is quite nice on this map, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I wonder if maybe, you know, it's worth going for something like uh, a, a Militia Rush or like a Mana Arms kind of play, for example, um, so that you can actually uh, get aggressive nice and early and then have some kind of units there to support any forward villagers that you might want to send in case of doing a tower rush. Uh, in this case, we've actually got Slam walling up across the front and uh, getting that sort of closed off quite early on, whereas Liri's not even 
considered building a single wall yet as he does loom right now and uh, we'll be looking to get to the feudal age at a very a very fast time actually in comparison to slam i think yeah what's also quite nice uh on this map and also with tutans is a scout rush uh since it's yeah pretty hard to wall off so um even quick walls are pretty pretty tough to get so uh that might also be a nice nice strategy to pull off besides you do do have quite a lot of food you can get up quite fast so Getting scouts out shouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, absolutely could be scouts on the cards as well, actually. Uh, I did see um, Slam. I thought he was moving three villagers out to take gold here, uh, but he's actually just building another lumber camp here at the, the Baobab trees. And uh, th an important note, actually, as well, is that the uh, acacia trees have 150 wood, which is 50 more than a standard tree. And the baobab trees had 200 wood as well. So although the wood does look very sparse, uh, there is actually a lot of additional wood in these forests because they do, um, you know, have the extra wood inside of the trees rather than, you know, it's not just about how many trees there are as, as it normally would be. Uh, interestingly as well, I've noticed Slam has a goat here. It looks like it's trapped, but I don't understand how or why. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, I was looking at it as well, but yeah, it might be trapped. It looks trapped. I mean, is it trapped? Oh, yeah, it is trapped. It's trapped between these two is. trees. Yeah, okay. It's just, yeah, because it's on a hill. It looks like yeah, it should be able to get out, but it's not the end of the world. It's it's 100 food, and he's still got two ostrich and a zebra at the back, so no shortage of re uh, food for him there. Liri's first to feudal, and you're totally right about those scouts. There is a stable coming up, and uh, neither player getting aggressive with towers or anything like that. It seems like they're both going to uh, do a very similar strategy here. Yeah, also the cheaper farm cost. Uh, not that it matters right now, but there is there is still enough food on the map. But later on, that that can help them as well uh, to get a lot of farms out where needed. Yeah, no, I I kind of at the moment I'm, I'm liking Liri's base a little bit more. Um, he's kind of walled it off the right side, and also another thing to note as well is you see why Liri is walled. That's um, light sand you actually can't build on that so there's kind of patches of the map which you cannot actually build on at all uh, which also makes another challenge for walling i suppose uh, but leary being a little faster to feudal here and gonna be getting the first scouts out that much faster as well the, the only thing about a scout rush though is it's just so easy to defend it just takes a couple of spears uh, positioned in the wood line and it's no problem you know you can very easily push the scouts away no that is true but um Still, even with with spears uh, defending it, it uh, you can just try to outrun them. And uh, and if you already force spears out, then then you already did a little bit of eco damage. So scout rush is more about uh, getting really small values out of your opponent rather than going really aggressive. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, they're not going to well, typically not going to overcommit to scout production too much. Uh, we've got both players actually doing their best to wall up now, as um, we see Slam doing a pretty big wall down towards the right of his base, down to the south. And uh, we got the first scout sort of pottering around on the left side of Slam's base, trying to actually. St uh, stop this from being closed up because this is actually the only gap in Slam's wall right now. But oh, Leary's going to send one scout in alone and he's going to get kind of trapped in there <laughs> potentially. Oh no, he yeah. can't close the wall off. But uh, that's enough to send Leary away with some free damage on a scout. Uh, Slam's going to take that and uh, be pretty happy with the outcome already as he gets one scout yeah. for free. Indeed. Yeah, that was a little bit too cheeky of Leary to, uh, to go in there with the scout. Maybe it was a pathing issue, but yeah, he had the standing there already. Yeah, he could have waited for the other scouts to come in from the back. It was actually would have been a nice place for Liri to fight potentially because he had that hill on in, in his favor. So if he's pushing in on the hill here, you know, he should be able to take a good fight if he can force one out of Slam. Uh, interestingly, Slam's actually uh, made a fifth scout now as well. And he's grouping them up, sending them forward, seeing what he can find. And look at how many farms are already up for both players. Really uh, able to farm very, very quickly with the cheaper farms and uh, start building up that food eco. And I guess I, the question is, will they commit uh, more to scouts? Will we see a, a bigger commitment? Or will we see them transitioning as we get a fight on the front now? Slam getting another scout in here. And he actually takes down two, not losing a single scout so far. Really, really good play from Slam with his micro here. Taking great fight after fight, it seems. Yeah, that was a really nice one. It's, uh, oh, but also a lot of low HP scouts for, for Slam. So he's got to be careful now with uh, taking 
other other engagements. Yeah, I think he actually um, managed to get something out of that little hillock there. So he must have had the attack advantage. But Slam's still adding in uh, scouts here, actually. He's up to seven scouts now. Uh, we have six, five, sorry, five, four scouts even. No, even less. Uh, yeah, sorry, no, it is four scouts for Leary. Yeah, I was looking four. back at home because I was seeing that he's got, he's actually made four spearmen. So Leary's um, really... Uh, I guess worried about the scouts from Slam coming in and uh, those spears are now sort of positioned on his gold and his wood whilst Leary's looking for some kind of way into Slam's base but Slam's got it walled up and he's on the counter attack. Yeah I'm pretty surprised that Slam managed to get it all uh, to get all the walls up and now looking at it it's it's not even that bad except for his right side that's that's a lot a lot of walls um, but yeah now Slam with the scouts trying to to poke uh, in Leary's base, but yeah, the spears just are too strong for now. If you have bloodlines and plus one, you can try to snipe a spear, but yeah, no, no upgrades. Yeah, for, with, the, with, the, with a little bit of micro, um, with those upgrades, you can very easily take out one or two spears if you can like isolate them and, and surround them. But uh, right now, I mean, I think both players completing wheelbarrow. Le Leary was a little is a little later on the wheelbarrow tech, and uh, we can see that Slam has a lot more uh, resources banked up at the moment compared to Leary. He's got about 100 additional food, 100 additional wood, 100 additional gold, and uh, we should see Slam hitting the Castle Age upgrade uh, a little bit faster as he builds his second stable back at home and continues to... Uh, roam around with his scouts and, and take more favorable engagements time after time here. Yeah, it seems like he can get a very nice engagement right now. Another scout down for Leary. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. And indeed, slam up to castle first. Yeah, it's already clicked up. And obviously here, adding the second stable, we're going to see him transition into knights in the castle age. And I think this is a good map for it because, of, like as we said, just how open it is. Um, Slam's map's looking a lot more secure. I know he's done this huge wall off and it's a little impractical, but it's at least giving him the peace of mind that Leary's not just going to rock up and, you know, be in his wood line at the back of the map here. So I think Slam Space looking a lot more secure. Leary is kind of very open on this left hand side and he's got a couple of spearmen there now, but once you've got knights coming in, well, they're really not going to hold their own, uh, especially without any upgrades on them. So um, the spears going to be. Okay uh, for dealing with scouts, but as soon as those knights come through, uh, it's going to be a different story. Yeah, I do wonder how Leary is going to gonna deal with this. Is he going to try to be aggressive? But again, he is up later, so he will have to defend for, for the first few bits. Uh, or is he going to wall up, or is he going to get town centers uh, to defend? Because now, indeed, like you said, he's completely open. Spears won't do much. Uh, he will need something to defend to, to defend himself with. Yeah, you're right. And he's got six spears out right now, um, which obviously, as we say, more than enough to push these scouts back. Maybe even a little bit too heavy on the spears, a little bit too precautious. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering where's Leary going to put his TCs in this one? Um, you know, his gold on the right isn't very you know, good location for it. Uh, the gold on the left is already kind of surrounded by stuff. I think he's going to want to put a TC on a wood line if he's going to put it anywhere uh, initially, uh, since the wood's probably the most exposed part of his eco right now. Yeah, but that is the problem for him. He could maybe go forward and get a town center on the stone and uh, uh, the wood. Or indeed, I think still it's uh, town center on the left on his gold is, is, is a good possibility. Yeah, on the flat ground, I agree. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that could be okay. He put farms around on the left side as well. Uh, but there we saw uh, Slam actually taking down a spearman with his scouts. And, you know, he's got bloodlines now. He's got plus one defense. So he is actually going to drop the uh, TC down on the gold on the left side. And I, that's actually a good place as well because, as we said, his left side is the most exposed. So that TC is going to help with securing that as well. Um, but uh, we've got Slam adding his second TC on the gold and both, uh, sorry, third TC as well coming up for Slam on the left side. At the same time, double stable production for Slam on the Knights and he's going to get them across the map, I think, pretty quickly here. Yeah, but now we, I think it's a little bit early to get three town centers. On the one hand, it does give you a pretty nice protection for your villages, which is important. But yeah, on the, on the other hand, he might be struggling just a little bit by uh, getting his knights out and getting additional upgrades on his knights. Yeah, sure. I mean, right now, Leary is uh, able to defend from the initial knights from Slam. 
And although Slam was a little faster to the Castle Age, uh, Leary, with that defender's advantage, does get his second round of knights out in time. Uh, Slam there, I think he killed one villager. I think he might have delayed the second TC a little bit. Uh, and meanwhile, Leary's third TC is up on the right side as well. And I'm not so sure about that one, actually. It, it's not a lot of wood left there. Um, so I'm not entirely sure about that TC. I think Slam's TC is looking a little better, to be honest. Yeah, true. Although it was, it, it, it is still quite a risk, uh, I think, to move out with his villagers uh, to the place. I was I was thinking you, you might have put it. If you have knights roaming around, then it might be difficult to get a town center up. So he... I guess he just didn't yeah. want to take that risk. Definitely a risk versus reward kind of thing. And uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, the other options would be to build it forward. And that is a risk, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Slam here with the monastery on the left side can go out and heal his, monk uh, sorry, heal his knights a little bit. And uh, also with that monastery, perhaps an indication that uh, he may play a little more defensively for a while while he booms his eco up. But I don't know. I mean, he's... Uh, Currently, let's just look at the army count, uh, a little bit ahead, I think, in knights, but they both have similar uh, level of army at this stage. Yeah, definitely. He is uh, still keeping up quite nicely, and I'm uh, I'm quite surprised that he hasn't really idled his stables uh, as much as I thought he would. Uh, but in return, he is uh, idling his town centers a little bit. So it's, it's quite tough to keep all the production up, but uh, I do like the addition of the monks. That definitely helps a lot to keep your knights alive. Yeah, it's pretty common as well with the like, Teutons and Franks. You see the monks coming out more often than not uh, once the knight numbers start getting uh, up a little bit. But yeah, Slap kind of is just sitting back for now, waiting for Liri to come to him. Uh, he will get a, quite a bit of uh, chip damage onto these knights as they run away. And Liri knows, okay, well, Slam's not let up production on his knights here, um, knowing full well that uh, Slam is going to chase him away now with uh, these knights being so outnumbered. But uh, yeah, I mean, neither player really making a big attack just yet. I mean, both players have actually made the monks as well. Both players are uh, willing to sit behind uh, their kind of, well, I want to say walls, but kind of sit defensively, I suppose, and uh, defend with the monks for the time being. And interestingly, Liri is actually adding a second barracks now. And I wonder if we're going to see some spears coming out for him or some more spears. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. He already has some monks out, so uh, the knights from Slam can't really do much. Even though Slam is taking his monk forward, so he's really trying to to go aggressive now. But then again, with the monks from Leary, the knights, it's just a risk to go in. You don't know what the convergents uh, are gonna do. Yeah, I mean, potential to completely turn the fight around. Uh, but this right. is kind of unfortunate for Liri, I guess, because he's left his base just as Slam's looping around on the left side. Slam doesn't have plus two defense yet, but there's no fletching on these TCs for Liri. So Liri's um, going to take quite a lot of damage here, actually. Even though he's fighting with Spearmen, they're unupgraded. The Pikeman upgrade isn't there yet. And Slam's going to just clean that up very easily. Now disrupting the gold. And, uh, okay, Liri does have three um, monks at the back. But again, being pretty unlucky with the conversions. Uh, obviously, the Teutons have that conversion resistance, and those uh, monks were only able to convert two instead of three, and he did lose two monks as well. Uh, Slam here doing a good job. What's going on on the other side, though? Um, yeah, nice from Leary running in as well, but not nearly doing as much damage as uh, Slam just did at, uh, at Leary's base. He, uh, Slam absolutely did a very good job, and there you go. Yeah, and in the end, the army count, look, uh, 16 for, for Slam, 15 for Liri. But it's it's not necessarily about what you've got. It's about how you use it and when you strike. And the timing there for Slam was just, just right. You know, Liri had just left his base and Slam loops around on this exposed left side. He comes in just before Liri is able to complete Pikeman, um, cleans it up, and then Liri's just lost uh, a bunch of villas right there. He's, I think he's uh, five villagers behind at this point, and that was just going to go up and up and up as uh, Slam was forcing his eco to go idle and killing more villagers with his knights in here. So it was a pretty quick game, actually. And I thought that it was actually relatively close up until that little engagement right there. Yeah, indeed. I was looking at the villager count and army count, and initially Liri was ahead just a little bit, but Slam was catching up already uh, in villager count. And the fact that he had Pikeman a little bit too late, that, that really turned that uh, fight into the favor of Slam. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think they were actually really close, 
like for most of that game in in the villages and in the, in the military um i just think that leary perhaps not quite as efficient as slam as well um he did make quite a lot of spares and i felt that that might have been a little bit unnecessary actually um if he'd have I mean, Slam didn't make, I think he made like, what, two spears maybe? Maybe even less. I think he might have only made one that game. And he was able to defend just fine. And considering they were like, you know, neck and neck in terms of village account, you'd think that Leary would also be able to uh, defend without the spears. But maybe the fact that he was so open on the left side also was the reason why he decided to add those spearmen. And um, whereas Slam was a lot more walled up and a lot more able to close his map. Um, let's take a quick look at the achievements. Um, we have 34 units killed for Slam, 14 lost for him. So really good KD for a short game. Uh, and the resources collected as well. Uh, we have Slam with just a little bit more of the food, a little bit more of the wood. But really it was very close in terms of resources collected. I feel like that was a close game still. Yeah, it really was. Nice game. Yeah, uh, it's a shame we didn't get a little bit more out of it, but uh, Leary's like, yeah, it's it's done. So um, we're going to...